All right, so you've seen us put together a fountainscape, right? And taken it to its fullest potential. The guys just finished doing an eight by 11 foot pond kit with a really cool waterfall. Now I'm about to tell them their next surprise. More surprises? More Santa. surprises. Christmas doesn't end. <laughs> you guys ready for one more challenge? Yep. Okay. You can only guess what it is, right? You've built a fountainscape, you've built a pond. What are we missing? Waterfall. waterfall. So guys, go pull a DIY backyard waterfall kit. Choose a place inside our sandbox okay. and see what you can teach all of our homeowners. Again, without using any special equipment, shovels, wheelbarrows, that's it. No special tools and just your imagination and someplace inside this location. You guys up for it? I love surprises. Oh. <laughs> this is more like Christmas for me because I get to be surprised on what you guys are going to build. So I'm looking forward to it. Take your time with it. Teach our consumers, teach our contractors, and we'll see uh, what you guys come up with. You ready? Fantastic. Break. There it is. All right, so like Brian said, we are going to do a pondless waterfall in the back corner of our sandbox studio. With this project, we are going to be installing the backyard landscape and waterfall kit, okay? It's it's the most DIY friendly, basic, beginner level, pondless waterfall kit that we offer. Fortunately for you, I did you the service of already unboxing it because again, it's Christmas time. I couldn't wait to get that present open. So let me go ahead and turn the camera around. I will show you the components first. And then throughout the course of this video, I will explain how each component is used and the proper installation techniques how we do it here at Team Aquascape. You guys ready for this? Let's go. Okay, feast your eyes on said backyard landscape and waterfall kits. Do a drum roll or something. All right, so right here we've got our Aqua Basin 45, which is the reservoir. It's a 100 gallon reservoir. This is a rotomotive piece of plastic. There's a variety of things that can fit on top of this. It's a little bit different than the Aqua Blocks and Pump Vault uh, application that we do with some of our other Pondless Waterfall kits, but we're gonna go ahead and use the Aqua Basin 45. Also what comes with it underneath here is our seven and a half by seven and a half piece of liner. We have a one foot by seven and a half piece of underlayment. That's that geotextile woven underlayment that you see in a lot of our videos. We have inch and a half flex PVC pipe. This is a 15 foot piece. We have the Aqua Surge 2000 pump. Also notice that it comes with a couple of different fittings than normally comes with the Aqua Surge 2000. Also in the kit, we have our install kit. You're familiar with this. You've got your DIY foam, you've got your glue, you've got your silicone. There's also a patch kit in here as well. You have your 12 inch waterfall spillway. This is that diffuser, as you can see right there where the water comes in through the back, flattens itself out and this is what's going to start off our waterfall. And then there's a handful of fittings with this. So you have two two inch male by inch and a half slip MPT. It's male pipe thread. You have a two inch bulkhead fitting and then you have a threaded collar. This is an extension piece that I'll get into when we install the pump in this project. The other thing that comes in this kit is this awesome Aquascape lifestyle welcome kit. This is what we give to all of our brand new customers. Whether they have a pondless waterfall, a fountainscape, a bird bath, or a huge ecosystem pond, they get this. What's really Really neat about this and I didn't show this in the last video what's really neat about this is you have a variety of water treatments you have a pond kit as well as a pondless kit but you get this cool coffee mug you've got a jump drive and then you've got some literature in there as well and some fun handy dandy koi cards so you can brush up on your koi identification okay these are handy anyway let's put this back together we'll give that to Greg in his Christmas stocking we'll put this back together we're gonna go ahead and put this off to the side so it does not get damaged so now that we went through the components I'm gonna go ahead and show you or go over the general layout out of this backyard landscape waterfall kit. We are still here in the sandbox. We're going to install this waterfalls on the back side of the berm that we just created with our seven by nine ecosystem pond with about a four foot stream. And that is still up and running and it looks fantastic. Anyways, let me turn the camera on. So here's our canvas. This is the back side of the berm up here where our waterfalls has started. There's that pond back over there. Of course, you see the circle patio, but we're gonna sneak this waterfall in right here. The basin will go somewhere down in here and then we'll have like a little four and a half, five foot waterfall coming into it. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this thread cypress. It's looking a little crispy. So I'm gonna put something different in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that out, then lay the basin down, mark that out. And then I'll go through the installation of the basin and give you some of those helpful tips and tricks that we utilize when we're installing this 45 aqua basin. All right, you guys ready to go? 
Okay, so we have that Thread Cypress is now out. We got that out of there. We've got our aqua base in place. We went ahead and graded it out a little bit so it was a little bit more flat. Everything sloped back towards me and I wanted to flatten that out and give you guys kind of a realistic view of where this thing was gonna sit and it wasn't all wonky. This is where we're gonna locate the aqua basin. Notice this pump access panel right here. This triangle piece simply comes off and this is gonna be where you're going to be able to service and hook up and disconnect your pump. The plumbing will run this way. It'll be a snug fit between the wall and the aqua basin, but that's fine. We will make sure that we get that in right between there. But we're gonna go ahead and dig down about 19 inches, right? So this aqua basin itself is 16 inches tall and it's a roughly, I think it's 43 or 44 inches by 44 inches square. So we're gonna dig up basically a four foot by four foot hole, 19 inches deep. And the reason we're doing that is we wanna recess this top lip about three inches below existing grade. And I'll show you the reason for that when we get to that point. So the next step, now that we've located exactly where this is gonna go, is go ahead and mark it out. Oh, one last thing. The reason that I put the pump access panel so close to the viewing area where I'm at, which is this patio, is just for ease of access. We want to show you guys, we can't stress enough how accessible you need to make this. I could have opted to put it over there, but I wanna bring this turf out over the top of this aqua basin and do kind of a unique edge over there, which I'll show you later in the video. And I didn't wanna have it back over there because my waterfalls is gonna come in off of that back corner, okay? So I didn't want to have to put a rock on it and pull the rock off in order to get to the pump. So I put it closest to the viewing area so that it's easy to access the pump. It'll be very easy to run that plumbing that way. And the waterfalls will start somewhere back up in there and kind of twist and turn and then discharge down into this aqua basin somewhere into here. So I'll get all into all that in a minute. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this turf back, go ahead and mark out my four foot by four foot square. And we're gonna go ahead and start digging. So notice Luis is coming about five, six inches off of the side. It's giving us a nice line. So he's gonna go ahead and trace the entire perimeter. Now, once we pull this aqua basin out, we're gonna need to kind of have this area open. When we start digging, we always wanna start in the center of the hole and work our way out on all different directions. So if you've got two or three people, make sure everybody's digging always to the same depth, a full shovel worth of soil comes out every time and everybody starts in the middle and then everybody works out in their separate directions. All right, we'll go ahead and pull this thing out. Ready? Okay. So there's our hole, roughly four foot by four foot. It's probably over just a little bit. Maybe it's 49, 50 inches from side to side and front to back. We are going to go ahead and start digging. A lot of this dirt we're gonna throw back up in here. Now, when you do this, and one of the benefits to this system, that it's all one unit. There's no aqua blocks. There's not a pump vault that you have to dig down deeper than the depth of the aqua blocks. You don't have to worry about any unique configurations. It's simply a four foot by four foot by 18 to 20 inch hole that you have to dig. The disadvantage to that is you're digging out a heck of a lot more soil with something this deep as opposed to the aqua box, which you would only have to dig about a 12 inch deep hole. So you're digging about 50% more dirt out of that hole to compensate for the depth of the aqua basin. So you just wanna make sure that you take that into consideration. If you're on the job site, where are you gonna put the dirt? If you have to haul it off or haul it somewhere, make sure that you figure that not only your labor estimate, as far as the amount of time that it's going to take you, especially if you have to transport it off site, or you can use the dirt that you generated through excavation to help create that berm. Now, now, we're already building into an existing slope. As you can see behind me, everything slopes down towards where the aqua basin is gonna be. But we also have a decent amount of real estate back there that we can go ahead and lose a lot of this dirt. When Brian and I did this project, gosh, I don't know, maybe a year ago we shot a video. Maybe we could put the link below. We counted somewhere like 12 to 14 wheelbarrows of soil came out for this aqua basin, which is a lot and it's substantial. So just make sure that you're considering taking out all of that soil. So I'm gonna put the camera down. Luis is already breaking a sweat over here. I'm gonna go ahead and give him a Hand. And then once we get this hole excavated, we're gonna place that aqua basin in, show you how far down below existing grade it sits, and I'll explain to you the reason behind that when we get to that point. Okay. This is a very impromptu and interruption to your video. Brian Helfrich and myself are excited to announce the Aquascape Hands-On Academy. And this is the hands-on area right here. This was originally created for the Sandbox Studio for the Aquascape Artists of the Year, but it's gonna be turned into a training academy for all people that wanna be contractors to come and learn with our crew. You're gonna see Chris, our crew, and how they build a one-day pond, and we're gonna show you how to do it in four hours. We're gonna have bleachers over here. People are gonna be able to get inside, get their hands dirty. And besides the 11 
by 16 or eight by 11, whatever yep. we decide to do for the one day pond. We're also gonna put in fountainscapes and a pondless waterfall. Come to the Aquascape Hands-On Training Academy this winter and work with us in a sandbox, actually getting your hands dirty and learning how to have a career with water features. Don't you wanna tell them about the other day? It's two days. The classroom day. <laughs> one day is gonna be hands-on in the sandbox. The other day is gonna be how to actually run a water feature business. Everything you need to know, 30 years of experience, 26 years at the helm, building water features, designing water features, selling water features, marketing water features, promoting water features, everything to do with running a water feature business. Oh, you said a lot in a short amount of time. We're gonna have yeah. a lot in two days. <laughs> Register, check out the link below. And now, back to the vlog. So the guys are wrapping up, digging the hole. We went ahead and installed our two inch bulkhead fitting. Just like any bulkhead fitting, you are going to put that rubber gasket. This is the inside of the aqua basin. Oh, there it is. This rubber gasket right here is gonna go on the water side. And remember, you wanna hand tighten this collar nut as tight as you can, and then give it a quarter to a half turn with your channel eyes. Do not over tighten this. If you over tighten it, you will hear a subtle pop and you will have popped the threads, therefore making the bulkhead faulty or not functional. So you need to replace that. So don't over tighten it. You just wanna have a nice solid compression. You'll see that rubber gasket kind of bulge out on the sides a little bit. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead while we've got it out here and we're going to install our two inch threaded by inch and a half slip MPT right here on the side. Yeah. So we're gonna need some silicone and sometimes it helps to have a pair of channel locks. Okay, so there's the MPT. We put a bead of silicone around the initial threads. Those are gonna be the first threads that meet up with the bulkhead fitting and then went ahead and, and hand tightened it. So as you hand tighten it, that silicone works its way through all those threads, making it a great watertight seal. Once we're done excavating, which we're almost there, we're gonna go ahead and drop this aqua basin in and we will hook up our plumbing before we backfill completely and run our plumbing and backfill simultaneously. Okay, so we have the hole entirely excavated. You can see it's nice and clean all the way around the edges. It's also level side to side and front to back. And it is 19 inches down from our low point, which is this corner right here. So we're gonna go ahead and lower this down and backfill. So I'll walk you through that process because we have a piece of fabric that we are going to install as we're doing this. I went ahead and excavated out just this little notch. This is where that MPT is going to sit. Once we get the 45 aqua basin in here and start the backfill, I'll go ahead and trench my pipe at that point. Uh, the reason I don't want to do it now is I don't want all of my walls to cave in because this is a sandy soil here in the sandbox. Anyways, that's why that is the way it is. So we're gonna go ahead and drop this thing in. All right, so this is where having two people really, really helps. Go ahead, drop it in. Now take it, slide it towards Steve as much as you can. Good, good, good. Okay, so we dropped our aqua basin in the ground. Everything's level front, back, side to side. So I want you guys to notice now, I'm gonna put a level on this. This is existing grade, okay? Let it down right there. All right, so I am level and I am now about two and a half inches, right? Yes, Jack? Oh, uh, it's like three. Is it? Good, this is even better. So I am three inches below grade with the top lip of the aqua basin. The reason we do this is so often I see the aqua basin only dug down just deep enough to get it in the ground. And then even sometimes homeowners and other contractors that are installing these will actually dig down about 14 inches and try and ramp soil up on the sides, which never works. Inevitably, weather, rain, wind, that kind of stuff's gonna erode all, all that away. And you'll see that top inch and a half, two inches of that black plastic lip all the way around, which makes it look horrible. We want this thing to look as natural as possible. And you'll see that when we start rocking in across and doing the edge treatments on top of the basin. But I just wanted to point out the depth to which this thing is sitting in the ground. Notice my pump access panel is right where we said it was. So we've got the aqua basin in. Now it's time to start backfilling, getting this thing secure. The kit comes with a one foot by seven and a half piece of fabric. What this is used for as we're backfilling is to drape along the back side where you are going to be backfilling. And what this will prevent as you start putting rocks on top of the liner, on top of the basin, we will end up backfilling even dirt on top of the reservoir. So it'll make a little bit more sense when we start rocking in here, but I'm gonna go ahead and install this piece of fabric the way it's intended to be installed. And then I'll explain to you as we're rocking in and you see all the backfilling and stuff happening. As you see all the dirt work and stuff happening, it'll make more sense. As we're backfilling, we wanna make sure that we compact everything all the way around. We also wanna make sure that we go ahead and attach our inch and a half pipe and we'll go ahead and run that up to where the waterfalls is going to start at the same time. So we're gonna go ahead and get the backfilling process started and I'll come back and we'll explain a little bit more for you. All 
right, so now while we have the aqua basin open, this is not normally the time when we would hook up the pump. Usually we'd have one person working on the waterfalls and the other person hooking up the pump once the liner was in here. But I've got the basin kind of cleaned off and I just wanted to take a second while it's quiet here in the warehouse to show you some of the different features or the different add-ons that come with this kit that don't necessarily come with the pump. So first, you have the slow suction device. What this does is it allows the pump to sit on the floor of the aqua basin and it sucks in the water through here into the Duluth, which sits about three inches above the foot of the pump. So it allows you to access 100% of the water storage of the reservoir. The other piece that's super important is this connection piece, but also this piece here. This is the one that will allow you, by using the rotational ball, to hook up into that bulkhead fitting. So you've got two inch threads here that will thread into that bulkhead fitting, and then it simply has a female threaded disconnect on the other end. So what we'll do is I'm going to disconnect this, go ahead and thread this into this bulkhead fitting like so. So this threads to the inside portion of the bulkhead fitting. Then I will drop my pump, everything down in there, and then this. nice and snug. Then what you want to do is go down to the bottom, make sure that all of your other fittings are nice and snug, and then there's that low suction that will pull from the bottom. So our pump is now connected. Always remember to not leave your pump cord in the reservoir and the odds that you will forget about it and fill this thing up and then have your cord completely submerged in water. Trust me, I've done it. So at this point now, we've got our fabric in. You can see it's been backfilled over here really, really well. So this is what we're going to use that will actually lay over the top of the aqua basin because the liner is going to sit on top of here. As we rock this thing in, then we're going to backfill with soil. So this will prevent any soil from getting down into the reservoir itself. Okay, so you're gonna see, watch Jack, drape this liner over the top. This is a seven and a half by seven and a half piece of liner. And we need to figure out exactly where that waterfall is going to start from so that we make sure that we twist this thing accordingly so that we can still are able to get our spillway on the inside of the liner. Notice that Jack is coming off of this back corner. The reason that we do that a lot of times is because you are going from corner to corner, which is a greater distance than if you were to just drape it across the one back edge. You get about an extra 14 15 inches out of it. All you math people could probably give me a better idea. And we're actually gonna twist this whole thing even more to be able to get our waterfalls to start back up in there. So the whole liner is gonna shift over to the left. Pull it. So notice we have the front half and the pump access panel open. We will have rock and gravel over the top of this, but you can see how we kind of pulled that liner, twisted it over so that the top was a little bit more left for the view because I want our waterfalls to kind of start back up in there. It'll pool and then come down closer to where Jack's right hand and knee is. So we'll get some movement. Believe it or not, we're able to still pull that off with a seven and a half by seven and a half foot piece of liner. One thing I can tell you is do not overbuild this. Do not continue to go back and go higher. Yes, we're building into an existing berm, Yes, we threw all of our soil up there and we probably have a little bit more than we need. So we'll end up tapering that out way back over there. So keep that kind of stuff into consideration when you're building your waterfalls. Do not give it that volcanic look that we always, always, always harp on. And we're gonna do this with not nearly all these rocks, but these are all hand-sized boulders. So you can see that's only about 18 inch rock max, but most of these ones are about 12 inches. And then we have a handful of cobbles that we're going to do. We will have five buckets of gravel, about 12 to 15 rocks, and I don't know, maybe about 10 cobbles or so. And I'm talking cobbles like the softball size stuff. Oh, right here, there it is. Right in the way so we trip over them. Was it me? Yeah. Okay, so now that we have the liner in and I think Jack and I are, are we saying the same thing or seeing the same thing with the waterfalls? Yeah. Of course we are. So this is where we deliberate and pick that first frame rock. The first frame rock is really gonna dictate how the rest of the waterfall gets built after that. So we really wanna make sure that we choose the right one, take into account the existing elevation around it, make sure we don't build too high of a waterfall, but we also don't wanna make anything that's underwhelming to the viewers. And I'm sure you guys would understand that because you wanna make a perfect waterfall for yourself. So we're gonna put the camera down and kind of talk through which rocks we have out here and then go ahead and start building our waterfall. 